March 11. Boundaries of the Land Then the Lord said to Moses, Give these instructions to the Israelites. When you come into the land of Canaan, which I am giving you as your special possession, these will be the boundaries. The southern portion of your country will extend from the wilderness of Zin along the edge of Edom. The southern boundary will begin on the east at the Dead Sea. It will then run south past Scorpion Pass in the direction of Zin. Its southernmost point will be Kadesh Barnea, from which it will go to Hazar Adar and on to Asmon. From Asmon, the boundary will turn toward the Brook of Egypt and end at the Mediterranean Sea. Your western boundary will be the coastline of the Mediterranean Sea. Your northern boundary will begin at the Mediterranean Sea and run east to Mount Hor, then to Lebohamoth and on through Zedad and Ziphron to Hazar Enon. This will be your northern boundary. The eastern boundary will start at Hazar Enon and run south to Shephem, then down to Ribla on the east side of Ain. From there, the boundary will run down along the eastern edge of the Sea of Galilee and then along the Jordan River to the Dead Sea. These are the boundaries of your land. Then Moses told the Israelites, This territory is the homeland you are to divide among yourselves by sacred lot. The Lord has commanded that the land be divided among the nine and a half remaining tribes. The families of the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh have already received their grants of land on the east side of the Jordan River, across from Jericho toward the sunrise. Leaders to Divide the Land And the Lord said to Moses, Eleazar the priest and Joshua son of Nun are the men designated to divide the grants of land among the people. Enlist one leader from each tribe to help them with the task. These are the tribes and the names of the leaders. Judah, Caleb, son of Jephunneh. Simeon, Shemuel, son of Amihud. Benjamin, Eladad, son of Kislon. Dan, Bukai, son of Joglai. Manasseh, son of Joseph, Haniel, son of Ephod, Ephraim, son of Joseph, Kemuel, son of Shiphtan, Zebulon, Elizaphan, son of Parnak, Issachar, Paltiel, son of Azan, Asher, Ahihud, son of Shelemai, Naphtali, Petahil, son of Amihud. These are the men the Lord has appointed to divide the grants of land in Canaan among the Israelites. Towns for the Levites While Israel was camped beside the Jordan on the plains of Moab across from Jericho, the Lord said to Moses, Command the people of Israel to give to the Levites from their property certain towns to live in, along with the surrounding pasture lands. These towns will be for the Levites to live in, and the surrounding lands will provide pasture for their cattle, flocks, and other livestock. The pasture land assigned to the Levites around these towns will extend 1,500 feet from the town walls in every direction. Measure off 3,000 feet outside the town walls in every direction, east, south, west, north, with the town at the center. This area will serve as the larger pasture land for the towns. Six of the towns you give the Levites will be cities of refuge, where a person who has accidentally killed someone can flee for safety. In addition, give them 42 other towns. In all, 48 towns with the surrounding pasture land will be given to the Levites. These towns will come from the property of the people of Israel. The larger tribes will give more towns to the Levites, while the smaller tribes will give fewer. Each tribe will give property in proportion to the size of its land. Cities of Refuge The Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. When you cross the Jordan into the land of Canaan, designate cities of refuge to which people can flee if they have killed someone accidentally. These cities will be places of protection from a dead person's relatives who want to avenge the death. The slayer must not be put to death before being tried by the community. Designate six cities of refuge for yourselves, three on the east side of the Jordan River and three on the west in the land of Canaan. These cities are for the protection of Israelites, foreigners living among you, and traveling merchants. Anyone who accidentally kills someone may flee there for safety. But if someone strikes and kills another person with a piece of iron, it is murder, and the murderer must be executed. Or if someone with a stone in his hand strikes and kills another person, it is murder and the murderer must be put to death. Or if someone strikes and kills another person with a wooden object, it is murder and the murderer must be put to death. The victim's nearest relative is responsible for putting the murderer to death. 
When they meet, the avenger must put the murderer to death. So if someone hates another person and pushes him or throws a dangerous object at him and he dies, it is murder. Or if someone hates another person and hits him with a fist and he dies, it is murder. In such cases, the avenger must put the murderer to death when they meet. But suppose someone pushes another person without having shown previous hostility, or throws something that unintentionally hits another person, or accidentally drops a huge stone on someone, though they were not enemies, and the person dies. If this should happen, the community must follow these regulations in making a judgment between the slayer and the avenger, the victim's nearest relative. The community must protect the slayer from the avenger and must escort the slayer back to live in the city of refuge to which he fled. There he must remain until the death of the high priest who was anointed with the sacred oil. But if the slayer ever leaves the limits of the city of refuge and the avenger finds him outside the city and kills him, it will not be considered murder. The slayer should have stayed inside the city of refuge until the death of the high priest. But after the death of the high priest, the slayer may return to his own property. These are legal requirements for you to observe from generation to generation wherever you may live. All murderers must be put to death, but only if evidence is presented by more than one witness. No one may be put to death on the testimony of only one witness. Also, you must never accept a ransom payment for the life of someone judged guilty of murder and subject to execution. Murderers must always be put to death. And never accept a ransom payment from someone who has fled to a city of refuge, allowing a slayer to return to his property before the death of the high priest. This will ensure that the land where you live will not be polluted, for murder pollutes the land. And no sacrifice except the execution of the murderer can purify the land from murder. You must not defile the land where you live, for I live there myself. I am the Lord who lives among the people of Israel. Women Who Inherit Property Then the heads of the clans of Gilead, descendants of Maker, son of Manasseh, son of Joseph, came to Moses and the family leaders of Israel with a petition. They said, Sir, the Lord instructed you to divide the land by sacred lot among the people of Israel. You were told by the Lord to give the grant of land owned by our brother Zelophehad to his daughters. But if they marry men from another tribe, their grants of land will go with them to the tribe into which they marry. In this way, the total area of our tribal land will be reduced. Then when the year of Jubilee comes, their portion of land will be added to that of the new tribe, causing it to be lost forever to our ancestral tribe. So Moses gave the Israelites this command from the Lord. The claim of the men of the tribe of Joseph is legitimate. This is what the Lord commands concerning the daughters of Zelophehad. Let them marry anyone they like as long as it is within their own ancestral tribe. None of the territorial land may pass from tribe to tribe, for all the land given to each tribe must remain within the tribe to which it was first allotted. The daughters throughout the tribes of Israel who are in line to inherit property must marry within their tribe, so that all the Israelites will keep their ancestral property. No grant of land may pass from one tribe to another. Each tribe of Israel must keep its allotted portion of land. The daughters of Zelophehad did as the Lord commanded Moses. Mala, Terza, Hogla, Milka, and Noah all married cousins on their father's side. They married into the clans of Manasseh, son of Joseph. Thus, their inheritance of land remained within their ancestral tribe. These are the commands and regulations that the Lord gave to the people of Israel through Moses while they were camped on the plains of Moab beside the Jordan River across from Jericho.